I'm excited to be here today, and I'm going to take you on a neurological journey. But to begin with, I'm going to ask you a question. How many of you believe that electronic devices, in particular smartphones, can be addictive? Please raise your hand. Good answer. Today I'm going to show you how. The first thing I want you to understand is 92% of our young people today have a smartphone device. And the question I have for you is how many hours a day do you think our young people spend on an electronic device? The answer is 6.5 hours a day. Now that is straight usage. A cumulative research according to the Pew organization indicates that young people spend 12 hours a day with their cell phones and electronic devices. Now when I say that, I'll have people question, how in the world can they spend 12 hours a day with their electronic devices? They go to school, they may be playing sports, and I simply explain, we have become a society that when we go to bed at night, we plug in a cell phone. When we get up in the morning, we unplug it. And it's pretty much within our body vicinity all day long. As a matter of fact, research indicates that our young people who we think are going to bed at night are really under the cover on their cell phone devices till 2 or 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. By the time a 19-year-old turns 60 in today's society, they will have spent 20 years of their life in electronic device. So the question that we need to ask ourselves is this question. What type of neurological growth and neurological development do electronic devices afford our young peoples whose brains are still developing? And today, at the end of my presentation, you're going to have the answer to that question. So this is the journey we're going to take. I'm going to talk to you about brain development and three very important neurological transmitters, dopamine, serotonin, and oxytocin. In the brain, we have three major sections, the cerebral cortex, the limbic system, and the brain stem. The cerebral cortex is the thinking part of our brain. It is where we reason and process thoughts. It is fully developed in a male at the age of 26, in a female at the age of 24. And in teenagers, you exist here in this part of the brain called the limbic system. The limbic system is not our thought and reasoning center, it is our emotional center. So our young people tend to feel and react, and our adults tend to think and then react. And one of the main reasons is because the difference in the development of the brain. Electronics are designed to play in the limbic system because it plays with the neurotransmitter called dopamine. As you grow, your brain begins to change in size and composition as teenagers. The gray matter begins to decrease and the cerebral cortex begins to increase depending on the type of activities that you engage your brain in. When a baby is born, the brain has to learn lots of different things that are taking place. So what happens is when you're born, you're born with 100 billion neurons. Now these are very interesting because they don't multiply and they don't divide, they don't go through mitosis, but they learn. So for example, when a baby learns to crawl, a neurological connection is made. When a baby learns to speak, a neurological connection is made. When you learn a foreign language, a neurological connection is made. When you learn to play an instrument, a neurological connection is made. And in between these neurons is a place called the synapse. Neurons don't actually connect. They come together and create a space that's called a synapse. And in this space is where your neurotransmitters play. And we're going to talk about that. So what you need to understand is that there are three types of structural development. There is structural development, which is long-term memory in your brain. 
There is short-term memory, which is where all the neurotransmitters play, and dopamine especially, which is what electronics play with. And then there's functional. Functional is the brain stem. The brain stem simply is our automatic brain. It makes it so we can breathe, so that our heart beats, and we know that when the brain stem is damaged, usually life is over. So this neurotransmitter, dopamine, is our anticipatory transmitter. This is the transmitter that electronics play with. This transmitter is supposed to be healthy for us and good at a certain amount of level. Research indicates that young people change the screen on their phone every 13 seconds. So that means every 13 seconds you are getting a shot of dopamine. Because every time you get a new Snapchat, every time you get a new text message, every time you look at Facebook, you are stimulating your brain with dopamine. And dopamine is an interesting animal because it relies on our senses. And it goes up and down like a yo-yo. So every time someone is on their electronic device, they're playing in the dopamine world. And this is what we hypothesize. Because teenagers using their electronics up to 12 hours a day, it's like having your brain run three to four marathons a day with the neurotransmitter dopamine. Because your brain burns 90% of the energy you consume. This is why electronics are addictive. Because this chemical dopamine that your electronics play with is the same chemical that meth, and cocaine and different types of drugs play with. It's designed to stimulate, it's designed to create cravings, and it's designed to create a crash so you want to keep using. And that's why electronics are so addictive. Now, how do we balance this? Because electronics aren't going away. This is the world we live in. You are the smartphone generation. You have the power to decide how much, how often, and for how long this electronic device is going to play in your life. And you also have the power to decide how to balance that. The way we balance that is with this neurotransmitter called serotonin. Now serotonin is a wonderful neurotransmitter because serotonin is called the mood stabilizing transmitter. It doesn't go up like dopamine. It doesn't go down like dopamine. It doesn't get stimulated because you look at an electronic device. It is produced in the limbic part of the brain through the hypothalamus, and primarily it's based on what you eat, okay? So serotonin is based on the food that you consume. And one of the first things we look at when we're talking to someone who has anxiety or depression is we ask, how much serotonin are you eating? And so that's a question for you in balancing as you deal with electronic devices in your world. Am I consuming enough serotonin? Because serotonin is the mood stabilizing neurotransmitter. Okay? So what I want you to think about is what did you eat before you came to school this morning? What do you typically eat before you run out the door? We see now on grocery stores, aisles, tons and tons of energy drinks, all these different immediate fast food but that doesn't have serotonin in it. So really think about what you're eating to balance the electronic world you're in. The next neurotransmitter that's most important for us is called oxytocin. Now this is the granddaddy neurotransmitter of them all. Oxytocin is produced through human touch. It is why we're human. It's what we're meant to do. It's also produced by animals. So we are meant to be held. According to the Center of Disease Control, your generation actually spends more time alone than any generation at any time. Their research indicates the generation of the 1980s went out three to four times a week with their friends to socialize. The generation today goes out less than one time a week. They spend more time on their phones, and in their rooms. Now, I'm sure you've seen this. You go out, and you see a group of teenagers. They might be at a local fast food place, sitting in a circle, and they're all talking to each other through their cell phones. 
They're all texting each other, or they're texting people who are not there. What that does is decrease the powerful neurotransmitter oxytocin. Oxytocin is produced by eye-to-eye, knee-to-knee, hand-to-hand connection. My great-grandmother grew up in the generation of oxytocin. There was no cell phones or electronic devices. You are a generation of dopamine. And now you get to decide how much dopamine, how much serotonin, and how much oxytocin. So the question that I ask is, how much oxytocin should you receive every day? The answer is eight hugs a day for eight seconds. Now, when I typically ask my audience that, I have less than 1% of people who will stand. So my challenge to everyone is to increase the neurotransmitter oxytocin back into their lives. We need to be touched, we need to be held, we need to spend time together. So in your families and with your relatives and when appropriate with your friends, it is important to offer a physical embrace, a physical handshake, because this is the neurotransmitter that stabilizes us as humans. I want you to take my challenge today. I want you to commit that in your life, you will make sure by the end of the day, every day, you have received eight hugs for eight seconds. You are the powerful, smart form generation. You are the generation that will decide whether the electronics control you or whether you control them. You will be the generation that determines whether or not we continue with increased rates of depression and anxiety, and even suicide ideation because of the electronic impact. And critical things that you can do to begin to make these changes are participate in the following activities. Research indicates that exercise is very beneficial for the developing and the adult brain. Learning a new skill, playing a musical instrument is beneficial to the brain. Going on nature walks, now it's interesting we have research that indicates spending time out in nature is beneficial to your brain. I'll explain that to parents, and parents will say to me, the first thing my kids ask when we're going camping is, is there Wi-Fi? And I say, that's interesting, because when I was a kid and went camping, the first thing we asked was, is there an outhouse? So the generations have changed. So think about that. Spend time in nature. Challenge yourself as young people when you go out with your friends to put the phone down and to talk face to face. Make a decision that when you go to bed at night, that electronic device is not in your room. Decide as families that there'll be certain hours a day where the electronic devices are set aside. Go back to playing old fashioned board games. I asked a group of young people the other day about Paul Harvey and what they thought of the rest of the story. And they indicated they had no idea who Paul Harvey was. Well, in my generation, he was a major radio announcer who would begin to tell a story, then you'd go to commercial break, and then he would come to the end and tell you the rest. So this is the beginning of the story, young people. Electronics are here to stay. This is the beginning of the story. Electronics can create a lot of damage. This is the beginning of the story. Electronics can change our lives in positive ways. And the end of the story is you decide. You have the power as the smartphone generation, how much impact, how much neurological change, how much social change are you going to allow these electronics to continue to have in your life? You possess the human individual power to make a difference in your brain development, your family's brain development, and that of your friends. There's an old slogan from AT&T way back when that said, reach out and touch someone. It implied to a phone call. Today I'm asking you to reach out and touch someone. Thank you.